Hey, there was a uh, caller who said they thought your van was suspicious. What's suspicious about the van? I don't know. I am a bird truther, a person who doesn't believe in birds and who's part of a larger movement called the Birds Aren't Real Movement. So in America, there is a growing conspiracy that years ago, their government killed all the birds. It's a movement of people that want you to know that birds are actually drones. I mean, you don't really believe that that happened, correct? Honestly, it's kind of offensive. We do not find this to be a humorous issue. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm dead serious. I guess if we're looking at numbers like TikTok and Reddit and Instagram and all that, probably two million people that follow us. But, you know, movements don't just exist on the internet, they exist in the real world. Birds are real! Yes. Birds are real! This is just shrouded in darkness for me. It feels like we're at the end of the chapter. I was basically playing a character of much of my life. Uh, right now I'm just traveling the country in this van, ready to go make a stand. I was part of a movement that believes that every single bird in the skies is a robot. It's always beautiful to get to talk to someone and see the little spark that lights up in their eyes when they understand the truth for the first time, you know? Oh my god, watch what happens with Franklin. Franklin! Oh, he loves paper bags. <laughs> in there immediately. It's his little trick. <laughs> The day I met Peter was like the craziest day of my life, actually. He like just started talking about all this crazy stuff and he was just sitting with the Birds Aren't Real poster. He was just like so serious too. Like he was so serious holding this sign. And we were just like, what is this guy doing? After that, like my whole friend group, just like we were obsessed with him. They're very sweet friends to me. It was just weird. Cause it was like a day that like notably changed all of our lives. My name is Peter McIndoe. Welcome. <laughs> Birds Aren't Real has sort of made this community, and there's a bunch of like members of that community all across America. Say, I don't trust the bird media. I don't trust the bird media. We're here because of a tragedy of 12 billion birds murdered by the United States government. How do you feel about that? Birds Real. Birds Aren't Real. Cincinnati, Birds Aren't Real, Chicago, and Austin, and Arizona. Everyone is coming together, all with their own signs. Movement's pretty much made out of Gen Z. And I think that a lot of Gen Z feels madness. The Birds Aren't Real movement will be holding a protest demanding that Twitter change its disgusting propagandist logo. We will not stand for the swamp media trying to destroy our cause. Birds aren't real! Birds aren't real! Birds aren't real! Maybe you've seen the billboard near the Highland Strip or heard the story on Wednesdays Live at 9. A campaign called Birds Are Not Real brings his efforts to the Mid-South. From 1959 through 2001, the government mercilessly genocided over 12 billion birds and simultaneously replaced them with surveillance drones in disguise. I mean, you don't really believe that that happened, correct? This is a satirical uh, campaign to make the point that what? Honestly, it's kind of offensive. Um, okay. This is the first time that I've ever broken character in an interview, yeah. And I've realized I don't know how to do it. <laughs> like, I have no idea how to uh, be out, out of character on camera. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's been a really interesting experience. I have been playing a character for the past five years who believes that every bird is a surveillance drone and who's part of a larger movement called the Birds Aren't Real Movement. So I've been basically representing the movement, never leaving character, even in like behind the scenes conversations with journalists or anything. So this is new, a new experience for me. Birds Aren't Real started uh, by accident in 2017. I was in Memphis with some friends. We all just like went around town. There was some protest happening, a rally. I'd always thought it would be funny like it's like a funny skit if there was one like person there with a sign that had nothing to do with the unified message of the rally. It's like a poster on a wall that had like a white back of it and just took it off the wall. I just wrote like the three most random words I could think of or the most absurd thing I could think which which was birds aren't real. Then took the sign and you know went marching around. 
telling people very passionately the birds aren't real. Then people would ask me like, well, what does that mean? The concept of it, I guess, was pretty much just made up in like three minutes. As I was doing that, the people I were with started just kind of taking videos. Birds are a myth. They're an illusion. They're a lie. Wake up, America. Wake up. God. God. Birds are real. Birds are real. I didn't even like know what satire really meant. Started doing birds aren't real. And then people started kind of telling us what it was as we were doing it. This is just how it started. <laughs> Pigeons, not real. Eagles. It wasn't like we sat down and we're like, we're going to make a satire. It was just an idea put out into the world by accident. Yeah, for some reason, a lot of people identified with. Pigeons are liars! The birds know your social security number! Because I was just really fascinated with the concept of, like, a fictional character living in reality. Birds charge on power lines. They're watching you and I every day. From there, everything just happened really organically. Just kind of like a snowball going down a hill. Dropped out of college <laughs> and moved to Memphis to follow the energy that had kind of magically blossomed. Everyone was like, what are you doing? Now the mayor heard we were coming, locked the whole city down. We're on their home turf! We were really interested with the thought that social media kind of presents like a new way to tell a story. And that we're all watching these different stories all the time from these people that we know. And I follow 300 people, like I'm kind of following 300 stories. I was really excited about the idea of being this representative for this greater movement and building the story out underneath it and kind of taking the seed of this thing and like making a whole lore and history behind it and making it feel real. And then what I'm representing isn't just a guy with a sign anymore. There's like all this meaning behind it. This is Connor who wrote the history on the website. He's my, one of my best friends. That's the thing about birds is it really is like basically a family operation. So that's my sister, Emily. We built this set in 24 hours in Little Rock. Since the Eisenhower administration, the US government has been committing genocide on the entire bird population and replaced- Connor came in and ended up helping me write all the history and build out kind of this whole uh, world. It's just a super small team. I made the Vietnam War part of Birds Aren't Real lore. Then Nick joined the team and I work with Nick, you know, to write the arcs. There's a thousand different ways we can extend this logic to make kind of a reflection of the times we live in. We don't want people to actually think, I felt like it was, that's why there's jokes in like the history. There's winks. There's, yeah. there's twinkles in the eye and everything. Yeah, you there's know. clear jokes. There's always been a wink and everything. We never set out to make an actual conspiracy theory. If anyone digs for five minutes, you know, 10 minutes, actually watches a couple of the videos. If anyone puts some thought into it, yeah, it's clearly You, you can joke. see what's going on, yeah. yeah. This is Birds Aren't Real, you know. There's nothing more conspiracy than a conspiracy van. Literally, it's like, this information needs to get out so bad, I'm going to put it on my car. We like to tell people this is not what's actually going on. Way more complex. That's outdated. Yeah, way more complex technology. This is one of the first models. Somebody gave us this sign at one of the rallies. It's not a funny matter. We have made these shirts. Connor drew this on his iPad. There was a certain point when enough people were buying shirts, like Birds Aren't Real shirts and the merch, that I could like quit my job. My first thought was like, okay, I'm not an idiot. This wasn't a, like the biggest mistake of my life. Ideally, you know, the movement's not representative of uh, any one person. You know, it's representative of, of lots of people. And the van was kind of meant to be a billboard that can move around. It can be a stage for rallies and can take the idea anywhere. I've been doing Birds on Real for five years now, come this January. It's not something I want to do forever. Connor and I have been doing Birds together for five years now and about to go, about to go separate ways. Connor's going to Colorado, just kind of growing in different directions. It's a real like page turn to a new chapter for everybody, it seems like. From the first day that Birds on Real became an idea, it felt like it was bigger than me. Birds Aren't Real has sort of made this community, and there's members of that community all across America. We called it the Bird Brigade, which is like our boots on the ground activism network. Hi, I'm Caleb. I run the Birds Aren't Real Triangle chapter here in North Carolina. They'll make chapters at their own colleges, and they hold their own rallies. They teach the lore in seminars. We're visiting Brendan down in Arizona. Like, I've never met him and had no involvement with his Birds Aren't Real chapter growing and forming itself. Peter, bring here, man. It's so great to see you. <laughs>
I've been waiting for this moment. Like, <laughs> it's truly an honor. Absolutely. My name is Brendan Traxel. I'm the president and founder of the Birds Aren't Real and the U chapter here in Flagstaff. How was yeah. the chapter when it began? When it began, it was basically just me. I too yeah. spent, spent many a year alone. Yeah. But now we got tons of people every time, consistent. It's the best feeling. You guys ready to rally? Let's rally it up, baby. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see if I can squeeze in here. <laughs> you got it. What do you usually chant? I'll do like birds, 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 and they say lies, lies, lies. Mm, I like that one. Yeah. I've never used that. What would you say is the most important part of Birds Aren't Real to you? Just the people power, honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People think it's hilarious. It brings joy to people's faces. Everyone in America knows things are kind of crazy. And I think it's an important place and movement per se um, to kind of bring back the humor that we kind of lost. I'm very thankful that I was able to open my eyes to the truth. I've never trusted birds. I've, I've never trusted birds. You haven't either? No. The spokesperson for the entire Birds Aren't Real movement, here I can go! Birds Aren't Real! Birds Aren't Real! Birds Aren't Real! How are we doing tonight? Let me tell you this right now, the university doesn't want me sharing this information, okay? They came to me, they said, go up, say hi real quick, give the mic back to Brendan. And I said, okay, but you know what? I lied! Say, I lied! I lied! Okay, here's the truth. The United States government murdered every living bird from 1959 through 2001. Is that okay with you? No. Me neither! I hate it! You can't get an amen! Amen! Can I get an amen? Amen! Do you want to be in a history book? Yeah. Well, you're in it now. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on. <laughs> Birds aren't real. Birds aren't real. Birds aren't real. Birds aren't real. The movement's pretty much made out of Gen Z and millennials. Because I've asked myself, why are these people here? Gen Z specifically, you know, these people that have grown up with the internet seem to understand it on a different level. In some ways, it's like its own language, and I think that a lot of Gen Z feels madness and lunacy. And I guess laughing at the lunacy or embodying it can be an interesting way to express what you feel. It's been a long journey to get to this point. It honestly feels kind of crazy that we're finally like in the stretch between LA and Twitter. Uh, we've been on the road for a week now. Just me and Nick. We are going to hold our next rally at Twitter headquarters, where we're going to gather bird truthers outside and protest demanding that Twitter uh, changes their logo. It's sort of a protest of not only Twitter, but of this concept of brainwashing. We are gonna do some biblical shit with Twitter headquarters. We're gonna march around the building three times like it's Jericho uh, to attempt to get the building to crumble down this has been a long time coming, so it feels kind of surreal, ready to go make a, make a stand. I mean, in a lot of ways right now, it feels like we're in the last chapter of the book. Connor is about to be going doing different things. He's moving to Colorado, and Birds is no longer in character. It's growing up. And there she is. We're walking this whole thing three times. There's an alley right there that we cut okay. through. So, I mean, it's still long. It's gonna be the, by far the longest march we've ever done. Each rally isn't just a rally. It's like sort of this like performance in and of itself. The fun part about that is that we have lore and history built out underneath it. I immediately am thinking about we need to have water out here for people. Yeah. It's like we're all like, like walking around in this like fiction novel together almost. So, feeling really good about tomorrow. I think we're just gonna have to show up and do it. This is so interesting. Just being out of character on camera at all is bizarre. What, this? Just, it's just interesting. It feels vulnerable. You know, there's no vulnerability in being a character. So, a lot of vulnerability in being yourself. I was not expecting it to be as like personal of a thing, I guess. Yeah, it's been wild.
just to exist. And I kind of had to play a, a character that wasn't myself. You know, I think that's kind of where it started. And I think it's kind of where my fascination with, with conspiracy thinking started. Like, I think this is the character that I play because I just know this character really, really well. There's so many people like this in real life that I know. And what takes somebody to that point, you know, of doing something like a bird truther and like having an, an idea like that about these, you know, elites or these villains like totally consume their personality and their life and their families and their jobs and everything, you know? Like you can reposition yourself in your mind of like, I'm no longer the victim, I'm a hero. And I'm not only the hero of my story, like, I am like God's chosen hero. <laughs> like, myself and my friends and this small group of people, it's like us against the world. I'm feeling pretty, pretty peaceful. How are you guys feeling? I just want to make somebody laugh today. <laughs> I want to hear some laughter. I think this is going to be a banger. Yeah, it feels good. Um, I think like, you know, Peter and I have talked, you know, we never wanted to do, to do this forever. A lot of memories that we've made together and we've literally been all over the country and this is the apex of everything that we've talked about for a long time, so. To start something new, there kind of has to be a death of what was. Natural change. All right, everybody. Let's do three deep breaths in unison. Ready? Welcome to Twitter Day. We're here. Everyone will have a very important job today, both during the day and during the rally. Carter, you'll be driving the van. We need your LA driving skills. Your guys' job will basically just be people duty. Connor will be on the ground with you guys and will basically just be like directing. We need Eric to lead people across. Evan, you'll be leading the rally in front of Eric and I. Today, each of us will be the personification of truth, justice, and liberty. Are you ready? Woo! Woo! All right, let's go. Woo! All right, hands in the middle. One, two, three, truth. One, One two, two, three. three. Truth! All right, let, let's go. <laughs> so I've asked myself, why have I played this character for five years? I think it's because that was the story that felt worth telling and seemed to really become more and more of a reflection of America and a reflection of this feeling that I feel when I go on Twitter or that I feel when I walk outside, that lunacy. And embodying that kind of in the real world, yeah, seemed very worth it. Are you ready to march? After today, the Twitter logo will no longer be a bird. Birds are real. Birds are real. Birds are real. Look at the facts, just look up online. I mean, this is something I think we inherently always knew, but it's about time that we actually talk about it. I've never met someone that showed up at a Birds Aren't Real rally thinking it's real, except for if they think it's real and they're not a part of the movement. Everyone is coming together, all with their own signs, and all ready to like play their part. They monitor all aspects of our lives. Sometimes you'll think about a product, and then next thing you know, you're getting targeted ads on your phone. Everyone's talking in character from the moment that you step onto like the rallies. They're, everyone's acting, but there's been no conversation about it. Like there's no plan or rehearsal or huddle. It's like people show up and they know the role. I really want to wind up on the Birds Aren't Real Instagram. That's really my only goal. And I'm going to be very honest about that. We are here today to protest and make Twitter change their logo to the propaganda pro for brainwash imagery. Why is the Twitter logo a bird? Because they're trying to brainwash you. The rallies to me are like a really clear, simple representation of what I like about the idea. A fictional character can exist in the real world, and the people in the real world are playing characters in the story, same as the fictional character, but they don't even know that just by being themselves, they're in the story. You know, they're in the piece. Right now, we're about to march around Twitter headquarters three times like it's Jericho, and take this building to the ground. Are you ready? Yeah!
You know, we're all telling ourselves a story about our lives to ourselves. Everyone is doing that to some degree, tweaking elements of themselves to find that identity. I've thought of that about myself too, with Birds Aren't Real. Birds Aren't Real has been my way to find identity and, and purpose and community. You know, just like a conspiracy theorist. This is a good capstone to kind of place on this whole experience and um, I think being out of character kind of allows us to talk about it and process it together. You know, we're brothers and we'll always be brothers and we'll always be best friends, but I'm, I'm excited to get back to that because doing this together has kind of put a strain on our, you know, friendship. It's a new chapter. It is, it is a new chapter for sure, and that's a good way of looking at it. I think when I do get back home to Arkansas, I will miss the character because, but like taking that feeling of lunacy and like role playing it and like, laughing about it with with people. I don't know. There's something that feels sort of healing about that to me. Thanks so much, Yeah, man. that was fun. Yeah, You're doing was God's work. Crazy, love, dude. Love you guys. Bye. Have fun. Have Let's roll. Well, yeah, wow. On the other side of Twitter now. Hmm. I love birds on real.